of my life to engage in that ministry. Again, Jennifer LeClaire here with you, Senior Leader of the Awakening House of Prayer. We're going to talk today for a few minutes uh, about spiritual warfare, and then I'm going to answer some of your questions about spiritual warfare. And so begin to think of those. I want to do a wee bit of a preamble here because I just want to sort of set the stage. See, one of the things the enemy doesn't want you to know about spiritual warfare is that you already have the victory and that doesn't mean you don't have to fight. So that seems like a paradox to many Christians because we know that in Colossians, the Bible says that Jesus spoiled the principalities and powers becoming, uh, putting them to an open shame. He, de he defeated them on the cross and the principalities and powers, they were defeated at Calvary. And so we understand that reality that technically speaking, our legal position is one of victory. But our living condition, hear me well, our living condition is not always one of victory. In other words, sometimes we're in serious need of a breakthrough. Sometimes the enemy has, is thrusting sickness upon us. Sometimes the enemy is hindering us and stymieing us and harassing us. Sometimes the enemy, uh, he really does come in like a flood because his ministry is threefold. And you know what it is. It's uh, revealed in John 10, 10, Jesus himself described the ministry of the enemy to steal, kill, and destroy. And so one of the paradoxes of our uh, position here as kings and priests in Christ is that Jesus already defeated the principalities and powers, but we still have to defeat them in the sense of enforcing the victory that Jesus died to give us. And so many Christians won't even fight. They won't even pick up the sword of the spirit. They won't even get dressed for battle because they've been deceived into thinking that, well, the battle belongs to the Lord, so we don't have to fight. Now it's true that the battle belongs to the Lord, but it's not true that we don't have to fight. You understand? So that's the paradox. I mean, there's these, they seem like paradoxes. They're paradoxical in the sense that we have legal rights, but then the enemy has legal rights. <laughs> the enemy has the legal right in this earth realm to roam about like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. That's 1 Peter 5 and 8. So the enemy has legal rights in the earth, but hear me well, hear me well, hear me well. The enemy has legal rights in the earth, but the enemy doesn't want you to know or realize or understand that he has no legal authority over you except what you give him. Jesus said, behold, I have given you power or I've given you rather I've given you authority over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm you. So when we understand our authority, which is what the devil does not want you to know, he doesn't want you to understand your authority in Christ. And we can all say that we understand it, but we find out how much we really understand our authority on the battlefield. We understand the degree to which we are exercising a pure Holy Ghost authority, a pure in Jesus name authority, a pure from the throne room down authority. We understand how much revelation we really have on that on the battlefield. For example, if we hit the enemy and the enemy hits us back and we run, we don't understand our authority. If we strike the ground once and the, the enemy rears his head again and we think we're defeated, that, oh, well, that didn't work, then we don't understand our authority because our authority always works. Our authority comes from Christ. Our authority is in the name above all names, the name at which every knee on the earth, below the earth, everywhere must bow. So the enemy doesn't want you to understand that you've got to fight. He won, but you've got to enforce. The enemy doesn't want you to understand the authority that you carry. And the enemy doesn't want you to understand the power that you carry. Because you are filled with the Holy Spirit. You are uh, not just seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, but you are filled with resurrection power. And listen, the same power that rose Christ from the dead dwells on the inside of you. Therefore, that resurrection power on the inside of you, is, 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 is it's overwhelming to the enemy when you understand it. So let's go through these three things again, and I'll begin to take some of your questions. This is not intended to be a, 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 a teaching episode. We're not trying to, uh, to do a, a training, a spiritual warfare uh, sort of a, a boot camp here. But I did want to set the stage. So those three things, there's more than three things, but three quick things. And you might be saying to yourself, well, I understand all these things. Well, I understand. Uh, Jennifer, I understand, number one, I understand uh, that Jesus spoiled the principalities and powers, making an open show of them on the cross, disarming them. I understand that. But if you really understood it to the degree that you needed to understand it, then you would be swift to enforce your rights. You would not put up with the devil for a minute. But many times, if we're honest, we put up with it. Or we're too, come on now, can I be honest? We're too lazy. Or we don't discern it. 
And so the, the, the more we understand uh, Christ's victory on the cross, the more sensitive we'll be to anything that, listen, to, well, the, the more we understand, hear me well, the more we understand Christ's victory on the cross, the more we'll be sensitive to anything that tries to overrule or overrun that victory that Christ died to give us. See, I want to live in, in, in victory. For not just, Listen, I don't want to just live from faith to faith, from glory to glory and strength to strength. I want to live from victory to victory and breakthrough to breakthrough. So the more aware we are of Christ's victory on the cross, the more aware we are when we're not living in that what he died to give us. The second thing the devil doesn't want us to understand is our authority. The more we understand our authority in Christ, listen, and there's levels of revelation here. There are levels of revelation. You, you should understand your authority more now than when you first got born again. So when we when we when we don't understand our authority, we're not bold in battle. I'm going to say that again. When we don't understand our authority, we're not bold in battle. OK, so that's the problem. The, the more we understand our authority, the more bold we get. The Bible says the righteous are as bold as lions. So that's why you hear me on my morning prayer broadcast going for it, going after it, because I'm not scared of the enemy, because I know who I am in Christ. Not only that, I know the authority I have in Christ. Okay, so the first thing is he doesn't want you to understand that, you know, Jesus died on the cross to give you the victory. Number two, he doesn't want you to understand your authority. And number three, he doesn't want you to understand the power that raised Christ uh, from the dead is on the inside of you. And if that power is in you, that means you can release that power through decrees, through uh, through prayers, through petitions, through supplications, through worship, through diverse tongues. You can, you can release the power of the Holy Spirit in many different ways to push back the darkness that's trying to encroach over your life. And so I know that many of you on here, most of you are mature Christians. You, you could rattle off those things. You know who you are, my authority, the power, the right. But, 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 but are we really walking in that? Are we really walking in that? When we step onto the battlefield, do we really, 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 really believe that? Or are we just hoping against hope that somehow God's going to come to the rescue? The good news is God already came to the rescue. You are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. The victory belongs to Jesus. Therefore, it belongs to you because you're co-heirs with Christ. Amen. And so we don't have to put up with a lot of this stuff that we're putting up with. Now, I want to give you the opportunity to ask some questions. I think I just, what did I just, I exhorted you for eight minutes. And I hope you're encouraged because some of you are just weary from the battle. And I get it. But we don't have to put up with this junk. We don't have to put up with, we're not supposed to put up with. As a matter of fact, it's an insult to the, to the victory of the Lord Jesus Christ and his shed blood on the cross when we put up with it, when we tolerate it. Amen. So I'm going to uh, uh, let some of you come up here and answer your questions. If you want to be, uh, if you have a question, go ahead and raise your hand. I don't have a moderator here with me, so be uh, patient with me today. And those of you on uh, Facebook, uh, you can... Uh, you can ask your questions online. I'll get to as many of these as I can in the time that I've allotted for this. That's right. Sarah says we have to move from head knowledge to heart knowledge. We've got to move from head knowledge to heart knowledge. All right. Hello, Sophia. Am I saying your name right? Hey, can you hear me? Hey, did you have a question? So, Vea, do you have a question? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Do you have a question? Okay. Cool. Yes, I do. So, what happens when you've been through like severe, intense warfare? And you feel like you're battling, but the battle kind of got the better of you. Um, and you feel like you just can't do it. I've been going through that, and I called on two people yesterday to pray for me, and that's when it shifted. So I was doing it, I guess, by myself, but mm. it wasn't really working as well, despite understanding my authority. Um, how, how do you know? Um, how come it didn't really work as well? I couldn't shake it when I was mm -hmm. doing it by myself. That's a great question. That's a great question. And um, the initial answer that comes to mind is that sometimes we need a flight team. And a flight team, you see in scripture, it says one can put a thousand to flight and two can put 10,000 to flight. So there's synergistic warfare that happens when we come together. And sometimes, for example, if I'm trying to move something really heavy uh, in my house, 
uh, sometimes I can't move it by myself. I have to get somebody else to help me move it. And, you know, two people can carry more than either one could carry alone. So if I can carry 100 pounds and you can carry 100 pounds, when we get together, we might be able to carry 300 pounds because there's synergy in that. So you did the right thing instinctively. You went and found other people who could stand with you. Even when Moses, they were going against uh, some of the enemies in the wilderness and Joshua was out there fighting. And as long as Moses' hands were raised, Joshua won. But when Moses' hands got tired, Joshua would begin to lose the battle. And so we see there from that concept that there's synergy, there's strength in numbers. So you did the right thing instinctively. When you can't break the war for yourself, you got to run to your own company. You got to find people of like precious faith who will stand in agreement with you and break the assignment. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. That was a great question. Okay, that's it for me. Awesome. All right. Thanks. I'll see you later. Bless you. See you later. Laura, Bless you. Laura, do you have a question? All right, we'll take a question from Facebook. Let's see here. Laura. Sorry, I had my phone on mute. I, I apologize. No problem. I'm at this thing too, but good morning, um, Apostle Jennifer. Thank you for um, um, thank you for this morning. I listen to you um, every morning on your Facebook Live. I'm currently reading your book, um, uh, Decoding the, the Dreams, the Dream Decoding book. Um, so th thank you so much for your ministry. I've uh, gleaned a lot from that. My question this morning is um, how do you – um, I, I believe that I, I walk in. I'm walking in the authority. I'm, you know, uh, you know, calling on, on, you know, praying and delivering and, and, and doing all those things. When, um, but I feel like sometimes I, I, I second guess certain things um, or discern. I don't feel like I, I my discernment is um, like on point. When do you, or how do you, or when do you get to a point where? You don't lo you no longer feel like you're second guessing something and you just kind of you you just go like well, how do you get to that is that just a time thing is that a continuing uh fasting and prayer thing uh, i don't know if i'm asking that correctly but when do you, when when does it shift for you where you no longer second guess yourself in regard to warfare or in regard to your, your discernment essentially or yes in regard to warfare yeah think the of the spiritual, you know, discerning and, and, and that type of stuff? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, the enemy wants to bring us into a state of double mindedness because the double minded man can receive nothing from the Lord, according to James. And so we have to really cultivate uh, a, a knowledge of the holy. And by a knowledge of the holy, that was a book by A.W. Tozer. We need to understand who God is, who we are in him, who he is in us who the enemy is. We need to understand the word of God. So some of that does come with time. We cultivate discernment. We cultivate spiritual warfare skills. We cultivate all these things through practice, through experience. And so when you're second guessing yourself, uh, you've got to be really careful because the enemy wants to bring you into that state of double mindedness. You need to begin to break that, to break confusion, because God is not the author of confusion and he's not the, God, the author of double mindedness. So that's when I if I were in that position where I wasn't sure uh, I was struggling in that area, I would go to to, to maybe two people who I could share what I was dealing with and ask them what they see, because sometimes the reality is the witchcraft hits our mind to the degree that sometimes really, really do feel double-minded. Maybe we're not, but the enemy is trying to make us feel that way, trying to get us to come into agreement that we're confused or we don't know what to do or this is too hard. So when we're, when we're not sure what to do, uh, we can do two things. We pray in the spirit. We don't know how to pray as well. We pray in the Holy Ghost. Sometimes that'll break uh, that sense of confusion. Sometimes that'll break that double-mindedness and bring clarity. Uh, and barring that, you got to find somebody else who has a different perspective, who can see what you can't see. Uh, and then we, and then they'll can confirmed you can tell them this is what i'm thinking or you can wait and ask them their opinion and you'll and if they agree with what you were thinking you'll know you were right so it's i can't stress enough the importance of having uh strong people around you who you can ask for counsel because we're not supposed to walk it alone awesome okay thank you so much appreciate that thank you god bless god bless you apostle claire has joined us uh, she's in uh, amsterdam she's in the netherlands in holland 
and she's a dear friend. We She rescued me out of a really terrible situation when I was in Holland a few years ago. Uh, there was a Jezebelic woman who I was speaking for, and it was a difficult situation to say the least. And Claire came, whooshed right in and picked up me and Vanessa, and we continued on our journey and went ministering throughout Holland. So I honor you, woman of God. Thank you for joining. Would you like to say anything to the people with regard to spiritual warfare this morning? Bless you, woman of God. It's such an honor to connect again with you. I thank you for who you are. I stay listening every time you go know, uh, when you are on. I follow your prayer sessions. Um, I just want to um, discern what um, you are trying to do with the room, and then I'm going to chime in as soon as possible, if that's okay with you. Yes, yes, yes. So basically, I'm doing a QA, and a and I started off talking about, for those of you that are just coming into the room, I started talking about three things the enemy doesn't want us to know. And uh, there's a lot the enemy doesn't want us to know, but he doesn't want us to know, number one, that he defeated the principalities and powers. Um, but we still have to fight. A lot of Christians believe that, you know, well, Jesus did all the work. It's done. It is finished. And therefore, we don't have to fight. Um, that's a fallacy. That's a lie. The enemy doesn't want you to to know that you have to fight. He wants to convince you that you don't have to fight. Number two, uh, many believers don't have a deep enough revelation of their authority over the enemy, or they would not tolerate so much of this junk he brings into our lives. And number three, many believers don't have the revelation. The enemy doesn't want them to know how much power they really carry. I mean, the power of heaven, the power that raised Christ from the dead dwells on the inside of us. And when we're weak, he's strong. So uh, I was just priming the room because I know a lot of people are really struggling uh, with issues, uh, demonic issues, demonic cycles, generational curses, and just everyday warfare. And they walk in cycles of defeat when that's that's not their portion. Christ died to give them victory. And so we're taking some questions and uh, no, no, let's see here. N Nabila, Nabila is going to come up here and ask a question. Nabila. Hi, Apostle. Thank you so much for all that you do. Um, honestly, it's such a blessing. My question was that I'll try to make it quick is when do you know when to kind of draw the line? Um, and is it normal to have kind of reoccurring situations and having to keep rebuking a spirit? For example, I had a dream this morning and in the dream, something was trying to dig itself in my forehead. But when I woke up, I just saw this thick net in my room. I could just feel it was off. The, the, the energy in the room was just off the aura. So mm -hmm. I prayed, went back to sleep woke up but it was the same thing again and obviously I had to rebuke it again and then I took a nap just now not long ago same thing so I prayed again and I was like uh uh no this is not happening you know I, I prayed and then I did all my doors and everything but I was just wondering is this normal or at what point do you kind of draw the line and say okay something has to break at this point wow that's a great question well the enemy does tend to test our resilience um, you said you've been rebuking him. I might also try binding him. Uh, sometimes when you rebuke the enemy, he'll leave for a moment and he'll come right back. It's kind of like if you think about a child and you tell the child, no, mm -mm, stop it, cut it out. You know, you know, no, no. And they go away, but then they come right back and do it again because they're testing you. They want to see how far they can push you. So with regard to rebuking it, I would, that's fine, but I would bind it put a cease and desist order on it and command it to go in Jesus name. And uh, that's a, a different sort of strategy. So uh, that's one thing. But the other side of it is if it's happening over and over and over, of course, you do have to look for open doors. Um, you, you do have to look for uh, those patterns and maybe what occurred before the attack. Uh, you know, did you Sometimes it's something that we eat at night, sometimes something that we watch before we go to bed. Sometimes certain things that we do, God is in his wisdom uh, trying to tell us, stop doing these things, it's an open door, but we don't discern that God is trying to lead us away from maybe certain people. We can be in the presence of certain people and come home and feel attacked attacked by depression, attacked by whatever spirit is on them. But because of our strong alignment with that person or just even being in their presence, we pick up sometimes on, on some of the residue of what's attacking them. So um, we have to look at okay, what's preceding this attack. Is it random? Is there anything that I am doing? It doesn't have to be sin, but is there anything that I am doing um, that that is, you know, consistently happening, you know, that I'm doing consistently before I'm being attacked? So those are some some things to think about. Thank you so much. Thank you. Praise God.
Praise God. All right, who do we have here? Crystal, Crystal Barrios. Crystal, God bless you. Hi, God bless you, uh, Apostle. Um, you're very close to me. I, I, I love uh, listening to all your uh, broadcasts, and I, I'm grateful uh, for your ministry and your life because you've given me so much insight about spiritual warfare. And um, I just have a question you just mentioned about being uh, aligned with people. And I find myself in this situation with, and I'm just wondering or asking for direction. Um, I have a mother who I love dearly, and I've been contending for her. And there's a lot of spiritual warfare. There's a lot of torment that she's experiencing. And so the more I'm pressing into the Lord and the more I'm praying and trying to lead by example, um, she's still like, even I, I think she's an incredible amount of bondage and I've asked for prayer for deliverance. I've even prayed for generational curses to be broken. And I'm in a, the Lord is about to take me out of the situation, but right now, unfortunately I'm in her environment. And, and so is there any direction or anything that you could recommend? Because it is my mother. So how do you even disconnect that? You know, because it grieves my heart because I see the torment she goes through. And it really does affect me. So how do you, how do you disconnect? Because I realize it's spiritual, you know? Yeah, well, first of all, I'm sorry that you're having to to deal with that. I know it's always difficult with family members to, to watch them. And, and honestly, sometimes things bec not even, it's not even their fault. They're not trying to, but they become almost toxic to us. Now we, I don't recommend writing off family members. Sometimes you have to distance yourself. It sounds like in this instance, what you need to do though, is to take authority over the atmosphere. Um, you are filled with the Holy Spirit. You can release the kingdom of heaven. You carry heaven's atmosphere in your spirit. And so uh, many times you have to take authority over the atmosphere, like before you go to spend time with your mother. Sometimes if, if you know she's demonized, you need to bind the spirits uh, that are oppressing her before you show up. Uh, you know, maybe you need to put on worship music when you get there. Um, but you know, the, one of the biggest things you can do is just love her. And I know it's difficult to love somebody when they're, uh, behaving out of sorts, but love conquers all love never fails. And when we understand that, you know, love is spiritual warfare. When we walk in love and we demonstrate love to people, uh, who are difficult to deal with, or, um, you know, even attacking us, that is spiritual warfare. So, um, but you're going to have to begin to pray for her perhaps in a different way than you have been. If you don't know how to pray, to say, Lord, I just lift up my mother to you and just pray in the spirit. Just pray. Let him pray the perfect prayer. Um, it just, it's always difficult with, uh, with our elders, uh, with our parents, with our friends. Um, but remember, you carry the kingdom. You release that kingdom. Um, you know, you think about the Lord. And unfortunately, there's soul ties there with your mother for good or worse, for better or, or, or worse. Um, soul ties can be healthy or unhealthy. And so if there's, if there's an unhealthy aspect of your relationship with your mother, if there's a toxic part there, uh, then you need to break the toxic part, not break away from your mother, not break the, the, the motherly, the loving, the, the soul tie that God created you to have as mother and daughter, but to break the, the toxicity of the soul tie. And you might have to really sit with the Lord and ask him, you know, more a personal strategy for you. But those are some of the things that come to mind. Okay, thank you so much. God bless you. Apostle, can I add something to what you said? Yes, please. Yeah, so um, I totally understand and every, I agree with everything Apostle Jennifer has said to you. But I've also realized that oftentimes we take on the, the body or the assignment to be the one to deliver our family members or to bring salvation because we are the, maybe the, the godly one, the Christian in the equation. But it's not by default. I think that's the mistake most Christians make because I am a Christian or I am the core one in this family. So everybody in the family must be saved and be delivered by me. We take that assignment upon ourselves. But I think it's very important also to seek the Lord for strategies. The one of God already said it. You know, is this my assignment? 
Is it my body? Am I the one to carry this? And if I'm the one to carry it, God show me the way. I had family members to love them, pray for them, support them, but I had to come to a point when I was like, this thing is only getting crazier and crazier. God, is this my assignment? When God really revealed to me that it wasn't my assignment, I was released. And then the strategy was to begin to pray for God to send those that he has aligned in their destiny to bring the deliverance, to bring the help, to bring the rescue, to bring the, the, the salvation. So my place was only in the place of prayer. And I also understood that God is a God of time. You know, my role was just to pray and allow God to bring the harvest and when God wanted to bring the harvest, that brought such release to me and relief to me that I could function the way God wanted me to function within the relationship and the body. I mean, like the unnecessary weight was gone. So I think you need to see God like, okay, she's my mother. I see all the things, but is this body the right body for me to carry? Is it my assignment? And then listen to the the, 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 the the answer God gives you and move from that. I hope this helps a bit. Yes, very much. And you're accurate about sorry. Um, that you're accurate about this. The, uh, I have been carrying a burden and I really believe it's more of a distraction as you were speaking. I felt like the Lord was revealing that. Um, more than anything else and just to keep her in prayer because I, one thing that the Lord revealed to me was just like they didn't listen to Jesus the people that were close to him that that they didn't they didn't hear his word sometimes when you have those familiarities um, because they've seen what I've been through and what I walk through um, they're less likely to listen to what I have to say versus if it was somebody else so uh, thank you both so much. I appreciate it. God bless you both. Amen. Amen. Guys, I have a school of spiritual warfare. It's over there on my website, schoolofthespirit.tv slash warfare school. And if you want to get equipped in warfare, you can do that. It goes all the way from the basics to advanced levels of warfare. And we're doing those uh, monthly. So you can get involved in that over there, schoolofthespirit.tv slash warfare school if you have a question uh raise your hand so that we can uh, answer that let's see if there's any here on facebook or youtube that we can answer for you guys if you're on facebook or youtube you got to type your questions in and i will read them out I know a lot of you, every time I do a spiritual warfare q and I'm inundated by questions. And so this is your opportunity to, uh, to shout out and ask those questions here. I'm scrolling back on you on Facebook. Uh, let's see. Alcinda asks, Alcinda asks, how do you fight something huge if no one wants to help or walk with you to fight? Um, well, I'd probably need a little bit more context to answer that accurately. Um, there are times when we do have to overcome things alone. There are certain battles, believe it or not. Uh, I know it, it's an uncomfortable truth, but there are certain battles where we have to, we have to gain victory on our own. Um, so there's the principle in warfare that we're not always called to walk alone, but there are some times where God is, is wanting us to rely on him. He's wanting us to come up in our revelation of our authority. He's wanting us to uh, press into the word of God and to his presence to get a strategy. There are times when it seems as if no one wants to help, but here's the thing. The Holy Spirit is your helper and you and the Holy Spirit are all it takes to overcome the wicked one. So don't let it be discouraging to you if you can't find anybody to help you. Uh, instead, your help comes from the Lord. You know, where did your help come from? It comes from the Lord, the, the creator, the maker of heaven and earth. And so if he is for you, who can be against you, uh, Alcinda? Uh, don't, uh, don't let that discourage you. That's what the enemy wants you to do is to make you feel like you're alone. The enemy wants to isolate you, make you feel like nobody cares. Well, in reality, there may be people who would fight 
right for you. The other thing I would say to you, Alcinda, is begin to uh, listen to other people and their problems and offer to help them and pray with them when they're going through battles, when they're going through trials. Offer to uh, be that second person that causes the thousand to go to flight so that when you need help, somebody will be there for you. You know, Proverbs says, if you want to uh, be a friend, if you want to make friends, then make yourself friendly. And so begin to sow that, begin to stand with other people who are going through warfare. And by that gesture of friendship, you may find that they're willing to show up for you when you really need the help. So. Uh, I hope that that helps you, uh, Lucinda. If you have uh, uh, questions here on uh, Clubhouse, go ahead and raise your hand so I can pull you up to the stage. We're on YouTube and Facebook at the same time here, uh, answering questions that have been pulled through. So we are, hello, Audra, I see Audra on there, hello. Uh, I see a few more of you on here that I know, I see you scrolled up. I see you, Ivy, uh, you are a, a spiritual warfare lesson hog. I see you, Annette. I see uh, a lot of the Awakening Prayer Hub leaders here online. I thought I saw uh, Prophetess Tamara, but I think she might have left out. Another question here I see on... Uh, no, she's, scared. She's, scared. she's here? I can't find her. I've got a poor yeah. signal. Well, you want to pull her up on stage? Let me make you a moderator, Claire, if you don't mind. You can pull her up. I've got... Yeah. Um, let's see. Apostle Claire, you are now... A moderator if you can pull her up on stage i'd like to hear from her because a couple of people have dream questions and i don't know if if uh if the woman of god would be uh, amenable to answering a couple of those about attacks in dreams uh, but that would be tremendous if she could so raise your hand if you want to ask a question i'm looking here on yeah here's a dream one so I could answer that, but I would defer to the prophetess if she would come on. Uh, here's one from Sheila Sheila on Facebook. She says, how to pray for my husband being attacked by strongholds of addiction, of drugs, and past trauma, depression, mental, whom not in the home, causing division in my marriage. Um, well, if he's currently uh, suffering uh, from addiction, this sounds to me like a deliverance issue. Now, if he's not saved, if he's not born again, then we cannot get him delivered because he would not maintain that deliverance. And so the first thing I would need to know, Sheila, is, is he saved? The second thing I need to know is, it, are you in a Bible-based church that believes in deliverance? Because trauma, depression, uh, all this mental stuff and all the addiction, the addiction is just covering up for everything uh, that's going on with, with him, all the trauma, all the depression, the addiction is rooted in that. So he needs deliverance, counseling. You can't counsel the devil. I don't believe you can counsel people out of addiction. I think that you, uh, you must get them delivered and then you can counsel them. Uh, you can teach them and give them tools, scriptural Bible-based tools to help them overcome. Uh, but barring that, if he's not saved and he's not in a Bible-based church, uh, then you need to pray that the Lord would, would bring him to salvation. First and foremost, that's the, that's the first step. Uh, not all issues, when you get saved, you're not immediately delivered of all your issues. But many times when people get saved, they find the strength within them to resist what tried to destroy them. I'm going to say that again. Many times when people get saved, when they give their life to the Lord, they suddenly find the strength within them to resist what's trying to destroy them. In other words, they begin to rely on the Lord. Uh, they begin to understand uh, uh, that his strength uh, is enough to overcome what's tried to steal, kill, and destroy their lives. So uh, pray for him to come to salvation. If he is saved, uh, pray that the Lord would 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 uh, open his eyes to his need for deliverance and that how this can help. And beyond that, I don't have enough context uh, to uh, to answer. Uh, Apostle Claire, if you want to jump in at any time, just feel free. Yeah, I, I brought um, Valerie on. Valerie, do you have a question? I do. Um, I'm currently going through a custody battle with uh, my ex. We were never married. This happened seven years ago. I have twin daughters, Jocelyn and Jasmine. They're seven years old. Um, and he's been doing a lot of manipulation. And I want to thank you so much, Jennifer LeClaire. You've been really helping me. The 6 a.m. broadcast, it seems as though everything that um, uh, that comes up with the enemy taunting you and what do you, uh, what do, you do when the enemy knocks the wind out of you, it's just been very hard for me. Um, I'm not, um, the father is used to be saved, but he had church hurt and he didn't go back since he was 18. He's about 33 right now. Um, and so he opens 
kind of like a doorway for the girls. You know, they try to pray with them and they say, Daddy doesn't want to pray with us. He hates praying. And so um, what do we do in a situation like this? Do we, I know that I can't fight it with my humanity or carnality. And I know that God has been checking my heart as far as not holding any unforgiveness or bitterness towards him. Um, but he's literally trying to take them away from me. There hasn't been any um, abuse or anything like that. Um, so is it okay um, to get a lawyer? Everybody advised me get a lawyer, so I got a lawyer. But how do we fight this battle as far as, you know, your children being taken away from you? And what are some other tools that, you know, we should use in a situation like this just to be better equipped and then trust that we do have the victory? Wow. Well, first, I'm sorry to hear that you're going through that. That's horrifying. Um, you know, I recently went through a situation where one of my spiritual daughters was divorced and uh, the, the, the husband wanted to take full custody of the child, which was utterly ridiculous and hired investigators and, you know, made false claims and bore false witness. And, you know, one of the things that, that we did was, of course, we did the traditional warfare, but we also took that to the courts of heaven because it was a clear violation. There were, he was lying. He was ethically, he was immoral. He was doing all kinds of things that um, opened doors for him uh, to be used of the enemy. So you take that to the courts of heaven many times and you strip the enemy of his legal rights. So that may, they, that may mean that, you know, if you've opened any doors in this process whatsoever, you need to shut them. You need to go to the courts of heaven uh, and, and and break the legal rights of the enemy uh, over this issue. And another thing is to pray for justice. Now, this is why you need to repent first. This is why you need to make sure you don't have an open door, that there's nothing going on in your life that is is making it possible for the enemy to terrorize you in this way. So but once you've repented and once you've closed those doors, um, pray for justice. I mean, day and night. Remember the widow in Luke 18, and she went to the unjust ruler and said, you know, give me what's mine. Give me vengeance on my enemies. And she, she prayed day and night. And, 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 and the Lord said, this is, you know, what the unjust judged it. He gave her what she asked for. And how much more will the father not give you justice speedily? So you need to, you need to, to close any open doors, number one. You need to pray for justice, number two. And uh, listen to some of Robert Henderson's stuff on the courts of heaven. Uh, I've only gone to the courts of heaven twice in 20 years of ministry. I, I don't run to the courts of heaven. Some people just run there willy nilly with everything, but that's really um, misinterpreting uh, Apostle Robert's uh, revelation there. The reality is you're dealing with a natural court system, but you, there's a higher court system that you can appeal to. And so uh, there's some videos out there from Robert uh, Henderson, Apostle Robert, and you can find those on YouTube and that will probably help you, but make sure you repent first. But anytime you go into warfare, you gotta repent first. Can I add something? Or add something? Please, please. Yeah. So, um, to add to what um, Apostle has advised you, I think we also have a responsibility to make sure that not only our spiritual life is okay, but everything around us is okay. Oftentimes, you see that um, women will go through things like this. They pray and ask for prayers and all of that, which is good. But then their life is not okay. Like simple things as, um, you know, cleaning your house, making sure. Because the legal system also has some kind of protocol, things that they look into. Amen. So if you are praying and you're living a jet of life, you don't follow. You are not disciplined. You didn't send you a letter. You don't open your letters to, to respond on time. You see like owing debt everywhere. The children are nowhere taken care of. They go late to school and all of that prayer is not going to help. So we need to be very balanced in how we do things as Christians, as you know, you know, we need to be very well balanced. So the one of God has spoken about the spiritual aspect of things, how to take care of it. But I just also want to advise you, make sure your life is, is, is the way it should be. If they come to do a check, how are you living? Do you have underwears and bread and stuff all over the floor or are you putting things in their proper place. So make sure those things are taken care of because when God sees your effort and other people in the natural, everything is not spiritual now, other people in the natural see your efforts. In Holland, where I live, your neighbors, they watch you and 
they will tell on you. And hear that your case, we are going through any things in the whole land, they ask your neighbors about your life. So if you pray and everything else is not right, you can still lose the battle, but because God is not with you, but you just need um, your wisdom. You need to focus on the things on earth. We are always so like spiritually bent. There's a natural aspect that we need to deal with. So I hope that brings the right balance for you to know what to do. God bless you. Wow. See, Apostle Claire, that's, that is so good because it does matter. It does matter. I, and I, I love that you brought the natural aspect of this answer because that's true in any area of our life. A lot of us who are spiritual warriors, if we're not careful, we get so heavily minded that we're no earthly good. And the reality is that, for example, some people, they say, well, the devil's attacking my ability to get a job. The devil's attacking my ability to get a job. Well, have you applied for a job? You know, have you applied everywhere? Are you being stuck up and only want to work certain jobs because you think you're too good? You know, so sometimes there really is this natural element of the situation where the enemy will take advantage of that. If we just get our house in order, we begin to do the right thing, then the right thing will begin to happen to us. There, you know, we give the enemy, I believe, in some cases, way too much power. We, we glorify him way too much. We give him way too much credit for a lot of the things that are going on in our lives. When in reality, what we do in the natural realm, we're tripping ourselves up. It's not the devil trying to keep you from getting a job sometimes. Sometimes it may be, but sometimes it's just the fact that God's telling you, go over here and apply to, you know, McDonald's and you're like, oh, I'm too good to work for McDonald's. Well, if you don't work, you don't eat. So you can't complain if you're not willing to do your part. If you do your part, God will always do his part. And so I'm really glad you brought the natural into this because I see it way too much. People get into the spiritual warfare ditches and you know they're not doing anything in the natural. They expect God to do everything. And that's just not how it works. He put us here on earth. We're supposed to, I mean, the deacons, we were supposed to, you know, if you look at the, the scriptural example of a deacon, they're supposed to be keep their household well, their children need to be well behaved, not given to much, you know, why not argumentative and the whole list there. Well, we need to be living by those standards as well, um, just to live in peace among the people around us. We, we give too much tr uh, credit uh, to the enemy. All right, Asia, Asia, you have a question? Yes, good afternoon. Thank you so much for allowing me to come up and ask a question. Um, I apologize if this has already been asked, but um, I'm wondering how I can best protect myself while I'm sleeping. Um, I feel like I'm getting attacked, not often, but there's been a few times, and so I'm wondering how I can um, better protect myself. Wow, 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 wow. Well, you know, I... The aspect of nocturnal warfare is something that is plaguing a lot of people, especially in this last year. Um, you know, some of the things that you can do to avoid nocturnal warfare actually start when you wake up in the morning. So when you wake up in the morning, how you wake up, what you focus on when you first wake up, you're setting the stage for your entire day. So when I wake up in the morning, immediately what I do is immediately before, as soon as my eyes pop open, as soon as the alarm goes off, you know, I say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for your protection. Thank you, Lord, for ordering my steps. And immediately my first breath is to give thanks and praise to the Lord. So that's drawing the Holy Spirit's presence uh, even stronger around me because he loves Thanksgiving. And then throughout the day, we need to, these are some very practical things. Listen, I'll get to the nighttime part in a minute, but this is just your crash course here. Uh, throughout the day, be careful what you look at. Be careful what you put your eyes on. Be careful what you listen to. Be careful about what you say uh, because the enemy is looking for any little thing uh, to come in like a flood when you're most vulnerable, when you are asleep, right? So the enemy is looking to come in like a flood. So you, you're going to want to watch that all throughout the day. Um, the, you know, the third thing is you need to take authority over the enemy before you go to bed. If you're getting attacked nocturnally, you need to uh, go on the offense and the defense. On the offense, we're confessing scriptures. God promises his beloved sweet sleep. We're confessing uh, the word of God, but we're also binding a nocturnal warfare. We're binding the jackal spirits. We're binding uh, the terror that comes by at night. We're binding uh, nightmares. We're binding these things. We're pleading the blood of Jesus over ourselves from the top of our head to the soles of our feet. Maybe go to bed with the Bible playing or with worship playing. Uh, go to bed speaking in tongues. And just you have to bind all this up and take authority over it uh, before you go to sleep. And and if it, and it might not stop at the first night because the enemy wants to see if you're serious. It might you might have to do this for a week or two weeks before it stops. 
Uh, if you're having insomnia, bind that spirit of insomnia, bind these voices that keep you up. Maybe you're anxious, bind anxiety. So some things the enemy takes advantage to bring the nocturnal warfare. For example, if you're massively anxious or worried about what's going to happen the next day, well, that alone is keeping you awake. It might not even be the enemy. So again, we have to look at the natural aspects of what's going on. You know, Joyce Meyer's husband, Dave Meyer, uh, some years ago, I heard that you know he used to drink like six Dr. Peppers a day or something like that, and it never bothered him. And all of a sudden, at one point, he started having insomnia. We couldn't sleep. I mean, for weeks, he couldn't sleep. And finally, I think the Holy Spirit told uh, Joyce, tell him to quit drinking all that caffeine so late at night. So some of the things that affect our sleep, um, they're not warfare in nature. It's, it's really some of the things we are uh, eating, putting in our bodies, uh, the fact that we're not getting enough sleep, uh, some kind of medication we're taking, quite frankly, uh, or things like that. So look at the big picture, uh, but start in the morning go, thanking the Lord and end your night thanking the Lord. And I believe that uh, if you do those things, you'll start sleeping better. Thank you so much. Let me add a little bit to that. Please, because please. The Lord of God has spoken so powerfully. Um, sometimes people don't get to sleep because you train yourself not to go to sleep. When you have to sleep so actually there's a distortion in in your sleep pattern when you know you're supposed to go to bed around 10 people are on facebook following twenty thousand different broadcasts you've been around <laughs> the network and doing all different things and then 3 a.m they want to go to bed and then things go on and on and on by the time you go through that for a, a couple of months you can't really have the normal sleep pattern anymore because you 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 brought that onto yourself i'm not saying that's what you have done i say i'm just saying sometimes i'm sorry apostle jennifer because i am so tired of christians every little thing is warfare not of course warfare is for real warfare exists but that there is so much we can do to avoid some things that we are going through. If your mind is watching all different kinds of things, it could be your mind is just too busy. And for some people, they can't get sleep because they're not doing much with their life. You understand? You don't, you don't do much so you can get tired. So <laughs> your body is not really telling you to sleep because the energy is still locked up in your body. So get something. Like my daughter, let me give you an example. My daughter was always complaining, Mama, pray for me, anoint me with oil, and the devil is not allowing me to sleep. Then she stopped going to school, she stopped going to work, she was always on the phone with her friends, she was on the internet. Finally, I told her, I said, you have one more year, either you get yourself a life or you get it out of my house. So what did she do? She went back and registered for school. With that school, she has to wake up 6 a.m. every morning to get ready for school. Without any anointing oil or the communion or laying of hands, my daughter goes to bed nowadays 9 p.m. And you can't even get her to wake up at 9 p.m. because she's like, Bob, she's gone. Because she's wet out, you know, from 6 p.m. to all the studies and she has to take the train, the bus, and all of those things. When she comes home, she eats, she showers and does one or two things and has to school work. She's ready to sleep. You see, no demon cast out, she's sleeping. So I just wanted to add a bit. I think Apostle Jennifer is bringing the deep side and I'm just going to remain on the earth side. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. I mean, if you're if you're if you're looking at trash TV before you go to bed, it's it stimulate all I mean, even scientists tell you too much blue, all this blue light is emitting from your devices. You're supposed to put all that away like two hours before you go to bed. You can't sleep. You know, there's all these things in the natural and we blame the devil. I mean, we blame the devil. We just keep blaming the devil for all these things. There's some things that are clearly the enemy. He does bring vain imaginations to our mind, for example. He does whisper things. He does try to bring division between relationships. We know this, but it's like ants at a picnic. If we understood our authority, if we understood Jesus already defeated him, if we understood the power that we carry, uh, we would stop, you know, being mamsy pamsies in the spirit. And we would just, you know, tell him to go and he would have to go when he knows he's got to go, he goes. But a lot of the stuff we bring on ourselves uh, because we just, 
well, I'm not going to go there. We, we bring it on ourselves for a lot of reasons. We open doors for a lot of reasons. So I'm, I'm glad you're bringing the natural side. I'm trying to touch on that, but um, I really feel like it's important that we walk balanced, that we walk, in, you know, glorifying God. I think if we give more glory to God, if we would, if we would walk circumspectly, if we would, you know, cultivate an intimacy with him, then when the enemy begins to show up in our midst, we'll be so sensitive uh, to, to, to walking in peace that when something disturbs our peace, uh, we'll be aware of it. We can shut it down rather than, you know, letting the enemy pull us into a dark hole. Uh, Glaucine, am I saying your name right? Glaucine, Glaucine? How, how do you say that? Hello, hello, good afternoon. It's Glauciani. Thank you very much. Awesome. Do you have a question for us this afternoon? Yes, and uh, I've been in the room for the last, I would say, 20 minutes, and several of the questions have already helped me and blessed me, um, as I can empathize with each of the, the people facing these, like the, the person with the relationship with the family member, as well as the last person with the, with the dream, uh, with the sleep. My question is, in regards to right now, at this moment, I have plans on uh, starting a business, and you know how you have both been saying that we need to take action and we need also to do our part as God has, we will always do our part. I feel like I have so many ideas and so much, but I can't, like I'm procrastinating beyond what I would, one normally would. So the, the, the question that I have is, um, in regards to getting a getting a coach, getting a mentor, how do you know that uh, this person is will, will be helpful to you and to your vision? You know, I don't want to align myself in any shape or form with anybody who does not share my spiritual vision as well as you know what I mean. Like, I don't want to have a coach that practices um, have different ideas of uh, God and life and faith that than mine so how do we know to choose what what are some of the things that I can use to know that this person actually has been reaching out to me for a few days and I was thinking is this a sign of God that I need to connect with her and be a client of hers or is this like um, a sign of the enemy. So that's what I was asking. Um, how do we know that somebody who is, who we see, who is around or has been contacting us and so forth, how do we know that that they are like sent from God, for example? Thank you very much. I'm Glauciani. Glauciani. Well, that's a great question. You know, <laughs> To me, it sounds like someone's being pushy. If somebody, if like somebody contacts me and I tell them I'm going to get back with them in a few days to think about it, or they keep contacting me and keep contacting me and keep contacting me, um, typically that's that to me that's I don't like that. So everyone's different, um, but you know, it sounds like you're already having checks in your spirit about it, and essentially we need to listen to those checks if we're that concerned if it listen the bible says that we're to be led forth by the spirit of god and by peace in the amplified version it speaks about peace being our umpire which means peace should rule what goes in and what goes out so you know if you need a coach i don't know how she found out how to contact you if you filled out some kind of form on the internet or if she saw you on Facebook and reached out. Uh, people are looking for business. I don't blame them for that. Uh, but when someone's too aggressive with me trying to sell me, then I know they're, it's I know that they're out for themselves more than they're out for me. With me, everything has to be a win, 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 a triple win. What is a triple win? A triple win is it means that God wins, I win, and the other person wins. And if it's not a triple win, um, then I don't do it. If it doesn't glorify God, it doesn't help everybody involved. It's not good for me. But I would look, if you're at all interested, I would look at her bio. I would look at her references. I would look at her clients. Uh, you might not be able to tell necessarily if she's a Christian. And a lot of times you really can't ask that. So you have to be led forth by the spirit and by peace. Um, and, you know, I, there are a lot of companies out there that have Christian coaches. For example, uh, the John Maxwell company. They're all they're all Christians. I, I, I get coaching from John Maxwell's group and they're all fervent in their faith and so um you know you might just if you want to coach that bad go to a christian coach but then even when you go to a christian coach they might be of a different persuasion than you spiritually so you really have to just press into the to the spirit of god and discern uh you know is this the right one for me and, and just lay it before him and, and again 
you know, prayer. God will tell you. He will lead you. And a lot of times it'll be by peace. So I forgot also, um, you know, saying, I hope I pronounce your, your name well. There is a popular statement that, that goes, I, I hope I remember it well. I think it says, um, when the student is ready, the master will show up, something like that. Um, now, I don't even sense in your spirit that you're ready for a mentor. Not, not a bad thing. It's like they're ready to have a mentee. A mentee is not ready to have a mentor. Don't let nobody to push you into something that you are not ready for. You, you know what I mean? If you don't feel like, oh, where you looking, number one, if you were speaking with me one on one, I will ask you, are you looking for a mentor? Are you ready for a mentor? And if you need a mentor, what do you want from that mentor? Those are the questions I will ask you, and then based on that, your based on your responses, I will give you uh, an advice. If you are not looking for a mentor at this point of your life, or you don't know why you would even want to connect with this person, then there's not even there's no need to even think about it. The answer is no. Sorry, ma'am. Oh, sir, thank you very much, but I'm not available. I'm not interested. You understand? Uh, Apostle Jennifer already said it. Don't allow anybody to push you or force you to do something that you still want to pray about or think about or just don't want in this time of your life and look for DNA. I'm not going to connect with somebody that, you know, I don't know. I, I don't I can't connect in terms of destiny things and purpose and uh or maybe assignment, the kind of anointing, their flow. For example, if you need somebody to train you in prayer, warfare, the prophetic and all of that, then you can check somebody like Apostle Jennifer out and then you just see how they do things. And some people will say they are mentors, they are not really mentors because they are not uh, they are not reachable, you know, they are not accessible. So you need to check out all of those things before you decide. But if you feel your spirit, no, 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 just go ahead and let it be a big no. Okay? I hope that helps. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you to both of you for your answers. God bless you all. God bless you. Tracy, Tracy, do you have a question? Hello, hello, and hello, Apostle Jennifer, Apostle Claire. I just want to say I'm so honored to be here. I actually had a testimony of your mind that I could share with um, Sister Glossiani that just um, asked the question because of what you guys were speaking about. And Apostle Jennifer, I just want to say that I'm very excited to see you here on Clubhouse. And um, I would want to encourage anyone here in this platform, um, in the audience, in this room, in this club right now, that you are in the right place. Sister um Glauciani, you're looking for a mentor of some sort, you found it. God knows your heart, um, and he led you here the same way that he led me here. And so I just want to say that um, Apostle Jennifer and Apostle Terry, you both mentioned about how warfare is real. Of course, we know that. I've been listening to you, Jennifer, in the um, 6 a.m. mornings on Facebook for um, weeks now. And, you know, God has a strong clubhouse, and I'm excited Warfare is re is definitely real, and you also mentioned that we need to be very careful. And yes, that is very true. And here on Clubhouse is no exception. We have to be very careful here on Clubhouse because there's more and more and more clubs and groups coming up in the name of Jesus, and many of them we have no idea where they're coming from. Now, I just want to um, give you guys encouragement, especially the last sister that um, just asked the question. Um, God went before me. My name is Tracy, by the way, Sister Tracy, and, and I'm just a humble Hawaiian girl from Hawaii. God led me here. I'm a child of the King, though. I'm an heir of God. I'm a joint heir with Christ and all those good things, and I'm your sister. And I'm here to just encourage anybody because um, the thing is, God went before me. I met you, Jennifer. You might not realize who I am, but I met you on March 14th when our church with champions a faith went down to Fort Lauderdale to the awesome a uh, uh, AHA, AHA church. And um, it was amazing. It was an anointed weekend. I'm telling you, I took pictures of my feet in the sand that morning because we went to watch the sunrise. Then we went to your church service. It was absolutely anointed. We 
got prayed over, and I left that week, and I left that area of Fort Lauderdale never the same. The thing is, there's no reason why I should be here. I'm from Hawaii. God led me here. He led me to your church. He let me know that you're the real thing. So anytime, I'm here to let everybody know right now, anytime I see Jennifer here on Clubhouse, I'm going to go to um, to where your uh, room is. Well, that is apart from my own apostle at my own church. We're seeing a couple of uh, uh, prayer rooms in the morning or etc. But I'm just so thrilled that I saw you this afternoon and I was able to jump in. So that's what I wanted to let everybody know was this, uh, these apostles are the real thing. You have to be very careful. But God, you know, in my case, it's a testimony. God led me here, and he went before me, and he already let me know this this lady, she's amazing. She's my daughter. She is anointed. She is chosen. And I was honored to meet you that morning. And Apostle Jennifer, I'm honored to see you here at Clubhouse. I'm going to be seeing you um, often, and I'm just very honored. Thank you for allowing me to speak. I relinquish the microphone. Thank you, Tracy. Yes, I remember when you and your whole crew came down and helped us storm the gates of hell that morning and press through. So God bless you. Allie, Allie, you have a question. Hi, um, yes, I have a question. Um, greeting the Apostle Jennifer and Apostle LeClaire. Um, my question was, I just recently um, found out that I'm called to the area of deliverance. But um, honestly, I've been struggling to grow in the area and to really kind of understand what that would look like. So I was wondering if you had any advice or tools, whether biblical or practical, to help me to fully understand or to grow in it so I could be more effective in that area. That was my question. Well, that's a great question. Yeah, you, you know, there's a classic book that everyone should start off with called Pigs in the Parlor. And that I think everybody who's interested in deliverance ministry needs to read that book. Um, we have a school of deliverance. You can take that online as well at school of the spirit TV school of the spirit TV. There's a school of deliverance. We're on our third year going into our fourth. There's like one lesson a month, starting with the basics and then getting into different types of deliverance and different uh, measures of deliverance. But it's important that you do get uh, some kind of training and be careful from whom you take that training. There's a new breed of deliverance ministers that are arising, and I'm so grateful for that. I actually prophesied about that maybe two years ago, but a new breed rising. Um, but some of these truths with deliverance are not complicated, and some of the deliverance ministers that are rising, um, they'll make it real technical and difficult and over your head. And the bottom line is, Jesus said, come out. And so, um, you know, it's not a difficult ministry. What's what's more difficult is discerning what you're trying to get out. And so I would uh, encourage you to really uh, press into growing in uh, discernment. Uh, usually deliverance ministers have that gift in their gift mix. Uh, if you don't have uh, natural discernment where you're not real naturally discerning, um, usually that gift of discerning of spirits, which is different than natural discernment, will manifest in your ministry uh, for his glory so that you can do the job. But you do need to get uh, some training, some experience. I would say, um, you know, we have a deliverance ministry at Awakening House of Prayer. And last night I was there, we were uh, dealing with a woman, bless her heart. She had what she called a thorn in her side for mm, since 2017. And the enemy, the Lord would tell her, don't, she said, the Lord was telling her, don't eat, don't eat. And every time she would eat, there was this burning thorn would manifest in her side. And she said, the Lord told her, see, I told you not to eat. You're not obeying me. Go on a three day fast. Well, this wasn't the Holy Spirit talking to her. It was a counterfeit spirit. It was a familiar spirit. And she had whittled down the 95 pounds and it was about to die. Her organs were going to shut down and she came in for deliverance. And so, you know, you get experience and deliverance by doing it. It's kind of like a surgeon um, going into uh, a hospital. First, you're an intern and you watch, you sit there and you watch and then you become uh, an attending and you're able to do the surgeries. And finally you become, uh, you know, the, you become a surgeon and you become an attending. So the, the point is study right now, study to show yourself approved, study G Christ deliverance ministry, study books like pigs on the parlor, parlor in the parlor, but then try to find a, a, hopefully your local church has a deliverance team sit in. Don't just start trying to go do it. Watch other people. When we do deliverance at awakening house of prayer, we have a leader and then one person to support. And then we have a third person that is, um, there to, to observe how it's done and to be able to ask questions later to debrief. So that's sort of our process of raising up deliverance ministers 
at Awakening House of Prayer. And that would be my suggestion to you. But discernment is going to be the biggest thing. Discernment, discerning the demons, getting them out once you know they're there is, 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 is the easy part. Discerning what's operating is what comes through knowledge of the Holy Spirit and also experience. Amen. Thank you so much. I'm sorry. Could you- All right. Um, I brought Jasmine up here just because Jasmine's one of my spiritual daughters and she always has a question. So hopefully she's still listening. So I don't have to rebuke her in front of the whole church tomorrow. Uh Oh, <laughs> Jasmine. I'm here. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> Jasmine, Jasmine always has the most insightful questions. Uh, we do schools and training and she's on our deliverance team. She's on our prophecy rooms teams. Um, she's there Monday nights, Friday nights during corporate intercession. And she is a really a bright and shining star. She's a watchman. She's got a a tremendous anointing. She's sold out to the Lord. Um, and I love to see young people like Jasmine and, and her friend, Sabrina, who's, who's not on because it's her birthday weekend. Um, I love to see these young ones rising up And and I wanted to bring her up just because it's so important. And I was in a room the other day where apparently there was some kind of hubbub, uh, about a young man had shared something and an elder didn't think he was qualified to do so. And this became this whole a little hubbub on clubhouse, which we're seeing quite a lot of. But, you know, I'm of the opinion that uh, when young people are hungry and they're showing themselves uh, approved by studying the word of God and they're submitted to leadership, that they need to be given opportunities. So, uh, Jasmine, would you uh, want to ask a question or would you share what the experiences have been like for you? Um, you know, learning so rapidly about spiritual warfare and deliverance. Do you have any uh, words of wisdom for some of the young people that are listening? Like, how do they raise up in this kind of stuff? Yes. Um, at first, I felt overwhelmed. It's like I was thrown in, and I felt like I'm not healed enough. I'm not delivered enough. Um, but there is protection underneath leadership, especially leadership that is really seeking God and leadership that is obedient to the Lord and there's safety there. Um, And in the midst of training, and it's crazy, apostles like, well, know what season you in. And so I know I'm in a season of training and also a season of healing and they can happen simultaneously. And as I'm getting healed and set free, I see my authority and power rise, like increasing drastically and quickly. Um, My giftings are increasing so fast that sometimes it feels overwhelming but the lord is walking me through it i have community there's safety there um it's been so much fun and so exciting especially to see demons come out of people to see people healed and set free and to be in a safe community to be able to ask questions um whether it's your personal deliverance or things you're going through or things you're seeing and noticing just the safety in the community and not feeling like you're out there by yourself and being able to receive knowledge and wisdom. Some things that we ask, it's just experience. Apostle has experience and yeah, we may have the gifting, but we don't have the experience in those things. So the guidance I think has been extremely important. I think it can be easy to go off into or pick up some type of familiar spirit, listening to someone or watching something just because we're hungry, we're spiritually hungry and we're seeking God, we can fall into the hands of something unsafe. So it's been outstanding having safety having leadership that's checking in, that's watching. Um, Yeah, I can't believe I'm in this place. I'm growing at this level. The Lord is using us, even though we are still being processed. He's using us, and that's really amazing because it's all about the name of Jesus Christ. And So when you're there and you're like, okay, I'm still getting healed and delivered myself, but I'm still able to set people free in Jesus' name. He can use us wherever we are, and it's been extremely amazing i feel super blessed some days i wake up like this is really happening because i used to watch apostle when i was in my earlier 20s in college and i'm 30 now so it's been amazing thank you guys i love it i love it i love it and i'm not going anywhere amen see i put her on the spot look how good she is she's professional that was amazing jasmine we love you so grateful for you i know uh, prophet vanessa I just love you girls dearly as well. I see Kangelic is also on the broadcast. Good afternoon. Does anybody have a final question? I want to wrap this up here, but I don't want to uh, let you guys uh, go. If you don't have, if you have a final uh, question, uh, I don't want to uh, leave you hanging there. Uh, otherwise, um, Apostle Claire, did you have any closing comments? Anything you want to, you want to say? 
Yeah. I, okay, so somebody has a question. Do I bring them up first? Oh, sure. Thank you. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, please, I'm trying to make note of that um, school of ministry, you know, the um, school that you talked about. I didn't jot that down. I would like to write it down. Yeah, it's uh, school of the spirit dot TV. School of the spirit dot TV. Then when you go there, the the banner for the school of deliverance is on the home page, and there's all kinds of equipping, spiritual warfare, deliverance, prophetic, um, Holy Spirit, uh, angel angelology. There's all kind of stuff over there uh, that we built out over the last few years. So, uh, developing spiritual discernment is over there right now. We're in a gift. Uh, we're in a series called activating the nine gifts of the spirit. We'll be releasing the uh, the new series on the Watchmen, uh, operating in a Watchmen anointing. That's going to be in July. So um, there's a lot of resources over there. As a matter of fact, if you're listening to me and you want a discount code, because there's free stuff over there and there's stuff that costs, uh, the discount code over there, uh, which I, it's really for my mornings with the Holy Spirit prayer call people, but I'm going to share it with you. It's just morning. So if you put the code mornings, plural, uh, you can get anything over there uh, at a discount. Thank you. You're welcome. Awesome. Thank you. Well, I hope you check out um, Apostle Jennifer Leclerc. She has powerful things out there. As you may already know, she has powerful books. And that goes for everyone in the club. Uh, for my final statement, I would just want to first of all uh, thank you so much, Apostle, for having me on. It's um, an honor. I'm very grateful for what God is doing in this season. The other day I was even thinking, I said, hey, I need to contact Apostle, maybe to have a room with her because there is so much happening in the prophetic that I feel like people are not healed well. You know, as you know, we've gone through so much where they said, oh, this is going to happen. God told me, but then God didn't tell nobody. And pandemic is going to go away, then it didn't go away. And then they gave dates and the dates came and passed. So there's so much confusion still that I think people need to hear from. Uh, um, really, I would say general of the prophetic, like you yourself, you know, to gain understanding and to put to rest what the body of Christ needs to put to rest and to just go ahead and heal and still believe that there are still real prophets of God. We can throw away the prophetic um, in entirely, but we can now learn how to discern or when to you know, take everything that somebody says or, you know, just to be more equipped. I know you teach a lot, you train, but I'm saying like uh, Clubhouse is where a lot of people now come from knowledge, for knowledge, understanding, revelation. And I was just thinking about just saying, hey, I need to look up um, Apostle Jennifer and ask if she would love to like to do a, a, a room with me. I can host it just to bring the understanding and my desire to help people heal. So I'm very grateful that um, you pulled me up in this room. And I saw your name on the hallway. I knew I had to come in mm -hmm. because I so love you. I uh, I really value our friendship and I'm just looking forward to what God has even for the future. I'm still believing God. I'm not forgotten the prophecy that came you in Holland that you are going to own some really strong base here in the Netherlands. So I'm still believing God and to stay connect with that. Um, so yeah, thank you. And I want to say to everybody in the room, you've heard uh, what we said. Remember there is the spiritual and there is also the natural. Warfare is real. The devil is real. But our God is so much more real. So you know who you are as a child of God. Know your authority. Know what we gain through Christ Jesus. Don't walk in fear. Walk in faith. Walk in boldness. And the power that God has given each and every one of us. And while you are walking in power, in faith, and in the authority of God, remember to do your diligence. You know, take care of the things that you need to take care of practically and physically. I bless you all and hope to see you again sometime soon in either this same room 
with Apostle Jennifer or any other room. I am Apostle Claire Reveal, and I'm done speaking for now. Amen, 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 Apostle Claire revealed, uh, you know, the, the devil is a liar. And uh, I think we can do a lot of damage to the kingdom of darkness together. So I was considering today, you know, who do I need to collaborate with in this next season? You know, I've always collaborated uh, with Apostle Ryan Lestrange. We did everything together for years and I've collaborated with many others, but I think you're right. I think we need to, I, you are right. We need to do something. I was going to suggest that if you weren't, um, if you'll send me an Instagram message, um, then I'll hit you back with my number so I can, you could get me on WhatsApp. Um, that is all I have. I want to do more of these. I want to do something once a week for sure. Uh, I got off Clubhouse a little while because all the election stuff, and I was navigating that as a uh, prophetic elder. I'm on a certain council that deals with those issues. And so uh, really just taking some time to pray. But I'm back now, and I want to serve you. Make sure that you follow Apostle Claire before you get off this broadcast. Just go and follow her now. Uh, follow me if you're not following me and send me a message. Let me know if there's something else you'd like to hear me speak on, a room you'd like me to uh, put together uh, and uh, who you'd like to see me collaborate with. So uh, God bless you guys. We love you. Uh, remember what you were taught. It's not all warfare, uh, but it is sometimes warfare. And so we need to discern the difference between the flesh, the enemy and the Lord, because sometimes we're blaming our warfare on God. Isn't that something? God bless you guys. I'll see you on the morning broadcast. And I'll see you out of the clubhouse very soon. Have a great day. Okay, period. I pulled Jasmine up. I don't know if you heard that. Kinjelic was on too, period.
Thanks for coming up to speak, Barry. That was fun. She said a lot of good things, period. She's really grateful to be at the church and healing and being equipped at the same time, period. Her and Sabrina are both outstanding, period. They could be massive rock stars, period. Just have to keep 